And Patty, you're recording? Go. Me too. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Living and Investing in France in Nice, actually. And this portion is about finding your dream home in Paris, Nice, or the French countryside. We have decided to give you a bonus because Ella Dyer and Jennifer Perrette and I didn't really have enough time to give you a full presentation on Nice and environs the way we wanted to during the presentation. So this is actually a bonus. What we're going to do is go into much greater detail about Nice and the area so that you have a really good understanding of what it might be like to live here. So again, this is with myself and Ella Dyer and Jennifer Perrette, who are uh, my right arms in finding property here in uh, Nice. And also I've got Patty Sadoskas with us, who is helping us monitor everything. So let's get started. First of all, let's talk about why we love the South of France. Let's face it, climate's fabulous. They claim 300 days a year of sunshine in Nice. I'm not sure if that's true, but it sure feels like it. And then there's moderate temperature. I find that it's about 10 degrees warmer than in Paris year round, except for in the summer, it's actually cooler, about 80 degrees in the summer. So you might be surprised to learn that. And then of course, you've got stunning sea and landscapes everywhere you look. On top of that, you have a very large and active American community with Democrats abroad and other organizations. So there's a zillion things to do and lots of people to meet. And that's a really important factor, I think, to making a place a great place to live. There's a very international community in the Nice area because of the British who came you know, during Queen Victoria's time, as well as the Russians during the czars, they came to vacation here. And then there's of course a large Italian community. Now there's a big Scandinavian community on top of it and Americans are coming in the droves. Let's face it, there's nothing like having an international airport. The international airport in Nice is the second largest airport in France, and you can pretty much get anywhere from there. It's so close to the city that it's literally a 20 minute tram ride away from the center of Nice to the airport. And it's got two terminals, it's easy to maneuver, it's a piece of cake. So you, this is a, a way you can find inexpensive flights all within Europe, uh, from Nice, simple, easy peasy. And you also now have direct flights to the United States. So it's, it makes it a perfect transportation hub. On top of that, you've got a good TGV hub, uh, the, you know, the high-speed train that goes all over France and into other parts of Europe. There's a really good local tramway system. There's an extensive bus system. And you've got even ferries that go to France, Italy, and Corsica. So access from this area is ideal. Now, what you might wanna think about is whether you prefer living in a town versus a village versus an independent home or villa, or if you are an urbanite and wanna be in the city. The towns along the Côte d'Azur are absolutely beautiful. They have beautiful views. A lot of them have sandy beaches. They are clearly an elegant lifestyle. And then up above, you have these perched villages that offer a quaint and quiet village living lifestyle. So, and they're beautiful, absolutely fabulous. And from them can be amazing views. If you choose a villa, an independent home, then you can have complete privacy. You can have land for a pool or a garden, and you can get a lot of space for the cost because they're not as expensive as you might think. But if you're in the center of Nice, which is the hub of the Riviera, then you've got real urban living and you really don't need a car. Everything else pretty much requires a car or you would want one to have complete access. Whereas if you're in the center of Nice, you have immediate access to the airport and the train station, you have an active Anglophone community and you really have access to everything without the necessity of a car. Now, there are all these other towns along the Cote d'Azur, which 
one is more beautiful and wonderful than the next from Cannes all the way to Montan. So Cannes on the west, Montan on the east, and Montan is the last town before Italy. I will tell you, however, that for year round apartment rentals, Nice is the best and your access is best from Nice. Because if you're living in any of these other towns, you really are one step away from having that easy access. So you just need to be aware of that. But let's talk about Nice. Nice was recently named a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And that's pretty exciting. That means that we're gonna see even more tourism. We're gonna see property prices increase. We're gonna see even more activity in uh, the improvement of the city itself. And even though there's been a tremendous amount of improvement of the city in the last 10 years, we've just watched it grow and blossom. It's going to be even more. Uh, Ella and Jennifer are now going to talk about Nice neighborhoods and give you a really good look at Nice itself. So Jennifer and Ella, thank you. Happy to be here and share one of my favorite subjects that is Nice. And as Adrian mentioned, uh, it's really easy to live here and rely on the public transportation and not need a car, which also reduces our living expenses. Our various neighborhoods are the Old Town, the Carré d'Or, uh, Musicians, and the center where I live. We also have the beautiful port. Uh, we can go a little bit further west to Fleur and Beaumet and find other, other beautiful areas, Cartiers, neighborhoods that have specific um, charm to them and uh, Mount Barone and Semier, a little bit elevated to give us some, some different views. But every neighborhood has its own charm and its own a specific value for what your needs and wants may be. I think that was really nicely said, Ella, because I feel that Nice really is a city of neighborhoods. Um, as you pointed out, they all have their own charm, their own sort of um, cultural center, right, with the little place where there are lots of uh, cafes or the main park where you go and walk your dog or you just go to get a little bit of exercise. And um, all of our clients seem to love the fact that they have their local cafe where they go every day or several times a week and they get to know the people, their dry cleaner, all of that. Very, very much a neighborhood, but yet right on their doorstep, five minutes away on foot, um, we have all the other neighborhoods. So you get to experience all of it really easily. And that's what's fun as well. You might, you might really consider your neighborhood, like I'm in the center, but uh, with work or even just walking the dog, um, who I hope does not bark during this recording, um, <laughs> to give her two cents worth. But uh, you can walk from one end of the city to the other, and the feel can be very different. So it's like taking a little mini tour, just running your morning errands or just getting some daily exercise. There is, it's never boring to walk around the cities and the streets and the neighborhoods. I'd like to uh, make a couple of comments here, uh, ladies. Uh, just that, you know, if you choose Montbaron or Simier, these areas are a little more remote than central Nice and probably you would want to own a car if you're gonna be in those areas. Um, if, you know, if your choice is uh, you want to rent your apartment for you know, a period of time, you can legally rent short term as a secondary residence up to six years. If you wanna rent the apartment, those apartments that rent best are the ones that are closest to the water uh, which I, I think is pretty obvious. So that means the Carré d'Or and Fleur and even Musicienne is gonna uh, you know, get you better rental revenues as well as Old Town. Old Town can be a great place for rentals, although it's not a place I personally recommend for year round living. The port area is really up and coming. A lot of changes are being made to the port and uh, this is a very exciting hip spot to be. And uh, it's, it's to be reckoned with. We should you know, take a good look at that, but it would be a little bit more difficult to generate a lot of rental revenue in the area of the port. So is there anything else you guys wanna add? 
No, let's go on to the next slide. I think I love what you said about Montboron and Simier because there are buses that go up there, but they don't go late into the evening. So let's face it, if you're trying to go down into Nice to meet your friends for, for dinner or you're going to um, see the ballet or you're going to a particular concert or showing or something, you're gonna, going to need a car or you're going to Uber and they have that here. So just keep that in mind too, but it adds to your expenses and it's definitely not as easy to get around. Okay, thanks. Okay, next slide is, we're gonna go into detail. Great. So who wants to start on Old Town? <laughs> I'm, happy, I'm happy to discuss the Old Town because I'm not far from it. Um, the Old Town is just that, uh, kind of where Nice began and uh, expanded from there. Uh, you have very old buildings, uh, often without elevators, third, fourth floors. And um, you just, we have to be very aware of what, if, if our clients are renting or making a purchase um, in that area, in, in a particular building, will there be an elevator in, installed in the future? Uh, will there be um, noise from the bars and the restaurants and so forth? So we just want to really vet the property for our clients, whether they're renting it or buying it. But the old town is really energetic. Uh, there's always something going on. There's old churches, you hear the church bells, uh, you hear the cannon at noon every day that comes from the chateau uh, perched above the old town. And uh, for those of us that uh, live here, we're, we're used to it, but we can always tell the newbies who kind of duck and cover when they hear a loud explosion at, at noon. Ella, it still scares me every time I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> me, too. me too, me too. And I love the old port because it does have so much activity going on, whether you're around Place Garibaldi, which has, you know, a new tram stop near it. So it's really upped its game a lot, more pedestrianized around there, some nice restaurants. But that's kind of on the edge going towards where Ella lives in Nice Centre um, and the port area. But as you get closer to the water, you get into those really the old fishing village part of Nice where you've got the old buildings, narrow streetways, really great restaurants, really fun little shops, the famous course, the Lea with the big market. Um, so it really is the most like living in an, an old European, very French village center. But it's tough to get light because yeah. the streets are narrow. You can almost touch your neighbor <laughs> often. Yeah. So it's tricky uh, to really find a good spot. I find that the best properties are on the Western side of uh, Old Town. Uh, yeah. Where, you know, like agreed. where the streets are wider. Yep, agreed. And around, and around the big plus, that, is ten, that does tend to be where we look. Um, it's also closer to the water. As you see, Old Town is this yellow section. And when you look at the map, as you move West, you're getting closer and closer to, you know, huddled to around the water. the water. Right. Neat. Okay, let's move on to a new section, the carry door. So this is where the majority of our clients are tending to buy just because it is the golden square. It has a beautiful range of buildings from old Niswa buildings, like you can see in the upper right corner to some Art Deco buildings to plenty of Belle Epoque buildings with big high ceilings and gorgeous moldings. It's got excellent shopping. You have the whole pedestrian area, which is Rue de France to Rue Massena, all the way over um, to Place Massena. And anywhere from within here, you are only five to maybe seven minutes walk from the beach. So as far as renting goes, uh, definitely the easiest ones to rent. It's bounded on the north by um, Boulevard Victor Hugo, which is famous in Nice for being the old gentrified, beautiful boulevard style living with Belle Epoque residences on both sides, etc. And then on the western side, it goes all the way over to um, Boulevard Gambetta, 
which used to be a place we all avoided, but now is seeing a real resurgence. And we can talk about that more because it's Boulevard Gambetta divides the Corridor musicians and Fleur. Ella, is there anything else you wanted to say about the Corridor that we haven't talked Absolutely. about? Our, our clients are partial to the carry door. Uh, we know, I am too. Yes, because you know, <laughs> I live in the carry door. Um, you know, the resale value is excellent. Um, it, it is exactly as Jennifer uh, described it. It's it's bordered between uh, My Street, Jean Medicine, Victor Hugo, and Gambetta. So it is a square, and uh, it is it is beautiful. It's sought after. We, we never steer our clients away from the carry door. However, we do keep in mind what our clients want and need. If they are looking for something that's an investment now that they can visit a couple of times a year as a pied a terre, but then they want to retire in five to 10 years, we may go to just the outskirts of the carry door where we have access to it but we have, we have a different offer in the form of a building, a price, size, and so forth. But the carry door, you, you simply can't go wrong. Even if you're borderline, like uh, myself, on the east side of Jean Medecin, I'm considered in the, in the Sant, but clients just made an offer next door because it was so close to the carry door. It's literally just across the street. And so just yeah, to sometimes get it's sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between them. And one of the things that we haven't mentioned is the greenways that the mayor of Nice is putting in. And the Carre door is one of the big benefit, one of the big areas that will benefit a lot from this movement where they're already turning has. already has. So the old bus lanes uh, on some of the streets in the middle that had buses going both directions they've been turned into one-way streets and the second lane has been turned into green space and bike paths and they're on the second phase of this where they are now putting the greenery has been in pots for the last few years and it's really big you know it's trees and things but now they're burying them and really creating more green spaces for everyone in the city to be able to access and you notice it very much when you're in the corridor I think. So just uh, as a, a note, this is Nice's most expensive district. That doesn't make it very expensive, but it is the most uh, uh, expensive property district. And I think uh, not only because the buildings are old and bourgeois and beautiful, but also because it's so close to the water. And there are a lot of pedestrian streets, which are very desirable, and, there's, um, and it is highly rentable. So if renting is you know, is uh, a goal, then this is, this is the best place it needs to be. And of course, I live there and I love it. So <laughs> I'm, I'm maybe a little bit prejudiced, but otherwise, uh, it's for want of nothing. Okay, after the carry door, what about the Quartier du des Musiciens? Lovely, another lovely area, very close to the carry door, and also close to uh, transportation which uh, we, we're extremely appreciative of uh, lines one and two running through. Uh, the, so the carry door, so the musician does back up to the carry door and uh, you can access it, any area of the city from there. The buildings are beautiful, Art Deco, um, very bourgeois. They can be a little, uh, further apart, so not like unis where they're so close together, you can get beautiful light. You can find apartments that are just bathed in light, whether there's um, outdoor space or not in the form of a balcony. And it's uh, more residential. However, you do still have your local grocery store, coffee shop, bar of uh, pharmacist, and so forth. So when our clients are they're either renting or buying, uh, they feel a, a sense of community because they are always outside. And whether it's just your daily errands or getting from one place to the next, you do get to know your neighbors because you're not sitting in a, in a vehicle somewhere. Well, plus it's close to the train station. So that gives you, even though it's a few blocks further away from the water, you still have easy access to the train station and the tram. 
So Cartier de Musicien is wonderful and less expensive than the carry door and can also be a great place to live and or rent. It's neat, we found some great, oh, I'm sorry, Ella, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, I find it a, a sophisticated, elegant little area. Me too, because we found some beautiful apartments for clients that have wanted a view. From here, you're a bit back. So you can get, if you're high enough up in the building, you can get a view across some of the rooftops of Nice. Occasionally, you can get a little slice of water. That's not really the point of being in musicians, but you get this gorgeous cityscape that lays out in front of you. And um, it's just wonderful. And it's just a little quieter than the Corridor because yes, there are restaurants and cafes and shops there, but just not as, um, as Touristed. many. Yeah, right. As touristed. That's right, that's right. Um, we haven't mentioned something, but up in the upper right hand, up, you can see where the train tracks are, but the city of Nice has a major project going in called the Iconic. And it's going to be a very upscale shopping hotel complex between musicians and the Centre, which is just a little east and where Ella lives. And we've learned some more about the movement of the mayor here is really encouraging renovation of the building so that he can create a very nice, beautiful, and more upscale corridor so that people arriving by train can get down into the Carré d'Or and into the center of Nice on beautiful walkways, et cetera. So there's some very great bargains that can be had up there. Um, values will go up, up, up as a result. Yeah. Absolutely. I've invested uh, in, in learning about this project before three and a half, four years ago, I invested in a small rental property there just for that reason. People say, ooh, the train station, nobody would want to be around the train station, but with the iconic, very good point, Jennifer, four-star hotel, beautiful shopping, it's a right. uh, position of it to the, the authentic looking train station is just a, a gorgeous, just going to be gorgeous. So looking at this map, the Rue d'Angleterre and Rue Paganini, for example, um, mm -hmm. and Durant are all good examples of those streets are going to probably become very posh and upscale as a result. Exactly. Lots of renovations are going on up there. And it's an interesting thing, too, because it's a buy, you know, we'll see. Um, with one of our partner agencies, we'll see a, a gorgeous building with a gorgeous apartment renovated in it. And we just have to be aware of the fact that, well, that might be right now the diamond in the rough for the moment on that block. But you look around and you realize that three of the other buildings right across the street are under complete reno. So it's very active. It's really happening. Okay, let's move on to Nice Centre. Ella should start this one since she lives in Nissan. <laughs> well, that uh, is really uh, Avenue Jean Médecin where we have a lot of shopping and um, just uh, terrific. It's the business district. Uh, you do have restaurants. Uh, you do have, uh, that was line one of the tram and it's brilliant. Uh, it's um, above ground until you transfer and going towards the airport or the port. So transportation is easy. Uh, access to the train station is easy as well. We have plenty of green space. What used to be the old bus stop, which was horrendous looking, has now turned into the Promenade du Payon, the park. And that's at the square of Place Messina where uh, all the festivities go on. We're having a, a blood drive right now. Uh, so in that area, it's set up and the park even hosts the annual jazz festival. So it's really a lovely place to be so close to when you are in the center, uh, whether it's uh, a few blocks east of Jean Metzen or, and a few blocks north of um, Victor Hugo, you still have access to everything that you need and want living and just enjoying life in the city. Um, the museums, it's a little bit less expensive than the Carridor. Again, that tends to be our, our most posh neighborhood. But for having a home like we have had for over 20 years now, 
Anjan Medsan. Uh, we have really seen the area grow and improve and it has just been a, a beautiful part of our, our lives together here. Jennifer, you wanna add something to that? No, Ella described it beautifully. She lives there, she knows it like the back of her hand. And, and uh, it is, it's, it's a really, it's very, it's very much city living, which means you have everything at your fingertips um, from the restaurants and shops, et cetera. And yet you're within seven minutes walk down to the beach and you're right by Old Town. So great restaurants, it's fun. Okay, let's move on to the port. So the port is, as you pointed out already, Adrian, undergoing quite a bit of transformation. They're creating another new pedestrian area around the port. So the tram goes right to the top of that. You can see the port on the screen and right at the northern part of the inlet of the water is where the tram stop is, one end of the tram stop. And the roads coming in around there are going to be turned into either one way or pedestrian pedestrian only. So there's a lot of investment going on here. And this has kind of a feel between the old, to me, between the old town and Centre, um, because you have some beautiful old buildings. And as you pointed out, you can get some great views of the, um, the port itself, which is really neat to see at night, or even a little more of the open water if you're looking the other way. Um, you wrote a beautiful uh, newsletter about the antique shops in that quarter that you discovered that I'm dying to get to. So again, sort of like Old Town in that, that it has these shops and this sort of history with Nice, um, but it's coming up and it's getting a lot of renovation uh, happening. So but there's it, some- But it is, fun. keep in mind that it is a little bit more remote. So okay. it doesn't have such immediate access to the beaches. No. Um, although now you've got the tramway that stops at the old port. So yes. fortunately the transportation has really improved, but it does, it is a little bit more remote from being dead center in the carry door of Musicien or Centre, that's for sure. But the views on the port are absolutely stunning. Magnificent. We, we have a client that's in the um, corner there, just right overlooking the, the port, uh, the tram, I uh, can see the church, the, the large church there. And it's just a stunning um, wraparound balcony that's just gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, if somebody's daily regime is getting up and going swimming every morning in the ocean, you'd have to keep in mind that's a good 15, 20 minute walk to the, the nearest beach. If you're a, a boat enthusiast, um, you would just go to the uh, to the port. You're there. Yeah, then yeah. you're there. If you're boating, you're there. Yeah. You're there. Uh, the, uh, the yacht club there is a lovely, lovely restaurant. There is swimming at that small beach there next to the yacht club. Um, but uh, just knowing what your lifestyle requirements will be is what's important, but it's a beautiful, authentic, lovely area that, as Jennifer said, is really uh, transitioning beautifully. Okay, so let's talk about the architecture because it really is diverse. True. So, okay, girls. <laughs> I would be happy to uh, start everybody that uh, we work with. Uh, we hear the phrase so often, we want uh, French charm. We're looking for a building with <laughs> French charm. Uh, a recent client friend uh, spoke of, she wanted to walk in to not only to her apartment, but also to the building and have volume. And so our bourgeois buildings that we do have in various, uh, various neighborhoods, that each neighborhood can be kind of mixed with its um, architecture. These bourgeois buildings do have the high ceilings, large windows. They may not have balconies, but just what we call Juliet balconies, uh, but they are bathed in light. Some even have fireplaces, occasionally working fireplaces. Uh, just lovely, lovely um, 
entryways. Some have guardians. Those are our concierge that live on the property. Those are few and far between, but if you're going to find one or you want one, that's typically uh, the building that's going to have one. And um, just it just depends again on your lifestyle and, and what your needs and wants are. However, as Adrian has taught us all, we'd rather be in a less attractive building looking at a beautiful building, <laughs> beautiful bourgeois building looking at um, a very unattractive building. These are definitely some of the most sought after buildings in the Carre d'Or. The, because they are so close to the water then, but they have this original charm, all of the moldings, the parquet floors, sometimes even decoratively laid parquet floors. You know, this is, this is harkens back to that time um, between the 19th and 20th centuries when there were still servants uh, that had a small room up in the top floors of the building and they were laid out that way um, for a very, you know, genteel, gracious lifestyle. Um, and it's wonderful to see how Nice has tried to preserve some of them. So oftentimes they will still have a garden. So you can get lucky and get a little bit of extra space away from the boulevard. Yeah. And so we have those in Corridor and musicians, you can find them in Centre as well. Up on Simier, a ton of them. But again, that's further away. And then in Fleur, which is just to the west of the Carré d'Or, lots of bourgeois, bourgeois buildings. But keep in mind that you're probably going to give up a big balcony or terrace. Because that's very just, true. They just didn't design them that way. No, and it was more difficult. They didn't design around modern living either. So you have to think about that. Yes, sometimes they can be arranged so that you can create modern interior spaces, but oftentimes you you may have to give up that second bathroom or the second toilet. You know, they were not laid out to be uh, lived in the way we live in our homes today. Okay, what about uh, uh, typical Niswa architecture? old world beautiful it's just beautiful colorful it's it's a, a feast for the for the eyes uh, we see this in the old town uh, again high ceilings large windows but uh, oftentimes uh, limited balconies these working shutters are charming it is just you really are in a different era uh, the um, again the buildings were not meant uh, for, as Jennifer said, modern day living. So uh, they may not have elevators. And if you're going up uh, three to five flights of stairs with your groceries or your suitcase, that may be something to really consider. Uh, we have seen apartments with beautiful frescoes on the ceilings because these buildings are three and 400 years old. And if that's what you want, uh, we'll find that for you. Uh, we can definitely find something that will be rentable. We can definitely find something that uh, will be a good investment. It might take us a little bit of time, but uh, we have done it and we'll continue to do so. The other nice thing about those buildings is they don't tend to be as large as some of the bourgeois buildings or the more modern ones, or these, these Pierre de Taille. The Niswa buildings tend to be smaller. So you may only have, you know, five to 10 uh, other homeowners in them, which can be a benefit uh, really, because it's just you to decide on decisions. Like, are we gonna put in an elevator? Things like that. That's, that's true. I think there's always though uh, intrinsic value in buying old, in buying into an old building because it's never going to not be that. So right. in other words, you really, um, from a value standpoint, it's a non-risk purchase as long as the building is in good condition and, and the owners keep it in good condition. You know, that's a key factor. Um, okay. And then there's the Pierre de Taille. Cut stone. Uh, these, are, um, these buildings are beautiful. Uh, whether we're living in them or just looking at them, uh, they're just lovely. Uh, again, we, we appreciate the volume that a high ceiling gives us because it tends to have a larger window, which gives us light. Uh, these stone facades are just very unique and uh, 
they can have fireplaces, probably, probably Juliet balconies, but an occasional like this, this building right here, you see there's one apartment with a balcony, the other, the others look like uh, more like a, a Juliet balcony. Uh, sometimes we can find terraces. Again, it just depends on what your daily, daily needs and wants are, but they are beautiful. These buildings tend to be in the Caridor and Musiciana in the center. Uh, occasionally we'll find one somewhere else, but if this is really the style that you want, this fits the bill of your day-to-day -day living, then um, that's what we'll look for. I think it's also so interesting comparing um, building styles in the United States to what you find in France, because I know one of the things people worry about being in an apartment is hearing your neighbors and a lot of noise, but these are stone built buildings. It is, it is stone between all of them. You do not hear your neighbors. The only place where you do is in the main hallway. And it's, it's really wonderful. Um, it makes for really easy city living. And that's, I think why people, you know, these buildings, they, they have a heart. People stay in them forever. So it's, it's really neat. Um, what do you think about the Art Deco buildings, though? The 20s? They're gorgeous. You find a lot of them, yes, in Corridor. I even sometimes, in my opinion, the really decorated ones like this one in Musician, they're gorgeous. They um, really tried to you know, capture this blend between a, a modern take on that old world styling. So they still have volume, they have high ceilings, big windows, but oh my gosh, walking into them is like walking onto a movie set sometimes. Hollywood. Sculptures and Almost fresco. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, really, exactly. But they tend to also have better balconies. Yeah. And you usually don't have a problem with a lift either. Almost for certain they were putting in lifts by this time. Mm -hmm. um, um, but again, you know, the staircases too in the bourgeois and the art deco and the Pierre de Taille buildings also tend to be large and gracious. The, the height of the stairs tends to not be too much. So even climbing up to the second floor is a lot easier than what we would think in a modern building, you know, on your, on your fire escape. It's just a different, it's a different thing. They were made to be used and go up and down a lot. Um, yes. Yeah. Excellent points because some of the uh, most recently was in uh, going at the port and the it's important to take the stairs to get a feel for what the building looks like. Is it in good shape or disrepair? And uh, this this apartment at the port or close to the port, uh, the stair the stairwell was narrow. The steps were not gracious. They were a little bit higher. So that would not be as easy to go up to the second or the third floor with your groceries or your suitcase, as opposed to another building uh, closer in the center. And the staircase was much wider and the steps were more, uh, were, were oh. not tall and they were just more gentle. And you could really see yourself carrying your groceries up that if you, if you needed to. Of course, it did have, those two buildings did have elevators um, but if that too is something if you are a family of four uh, and need to take the elevator and the elevator is small, that might require two trips. <laughs> okay, now, you know, you can always opt for something modern. There, there's, there are a few modern buildings inside of this of central Nice, but they do tend to be mostly in the outskirts where there was land and they could build them. Uh, but Jennifer, you can talk to this, I bet. Yeah, you know, what's interesting about this is for clients who really want low upkeep, they want to enjoy the charm of Nice from what they see out their windows, but they want their home to be easy, modern, recently done. Oftentimes you can find modern buildings that are still under Decenel, which is the 10 year guarantee that a really good builder brings to their work. And, um, or it may be a building that was built in the 70s or the 80s that has been renovated on the interior now, because the 80s is still 40 years ago, right? Let's, let's say what it is. So yeah, um, it's, it's a great option for that. And, you know, up in Simier, up in Montbaron, going over Everon. towards 
yeah, exactly. Fabron going over towards Kenya sur mer There's talk about having that be on the tram line, certainly, you know, in some of the villages along the water um, that we talked about at the beginning, you're going to find a lot of modern um, structures or high rise structures, and they oftentimes have a pool, a communal pool, etc. But what you're getting there is peace of mind about a brand new building and the guarantees that come with it. And the large terraces, large windows, right? So there are some, and sometimes swimming pools. So there are Absolutely. advantages to this. And also we've noted on here parking, and that's something to talk about because, um, you know, one of the things we always say and why so many of our clients buy in the center of Nice, the vast majority of them is because you do not need a car. However, if you want one, there are parking garages that I know very, very well, all of them. And uh, you can buy an abonnement which is a monthly subscription for about 135 euros to just keep your car there less than a block from your home. But if you're the type of person where you are on the go and you really, really want to have a car with you, well, going toward a modern building, you're almost guaranteed to get parking. Mm -hmm. That's true. Big advantage. Yeah. So just, you know, on a practical note, um, just, Keep in mind that, you know, one square meter, which is the measurement we use here in France, um, is approximately, if you want to round it up, approximately 11 square feet uh, to make it easy to calculate. Uh, habitable space, which is what is called the loi Carrez, it's the Carrez law that requires that a property be measured for habitable space so that anything that is lower than 1.8 meters high does not get counted as habitable space. Uh, so just consider that if you're looking at a studio, then you're looking at anywhere from say 15 square meters to 30 square meters, and you can sleep two people in that. A one bedroom is normally anywhere from about 28 square meters to 50 square meters, and you can sleep up to four people in that space. A two bedroom is oh anywhere from say 60 square meters to 90 square meters. And of course you can sleep up to six in a space like that. And when you get into three bedrooms and higher, then you're looking at at least a hundred square meters and up. Um, our spatial living is much smaller than in the, U in the United States or Canada, um, where they're used to everything being much larger. But I have certainly discovered that space is highly overrated and it's really not necessary that uh, when you have a lot of space, you just fill it with stuff and you don't actually live in it or use it as much as you might. So uh, the other thing is that we have cafe life here. And so we don't spend as much time in our homes, as you might do if you were living um, in, you know, in a place where there's not cafe life, it's more like living in your bubble. So here's a typical floor plan, just to give you an example of what that's like. And uh, this is a oh, pretty standard two bedroom apartment, but there's plenty of living space there. It's really true too, because when you talk about cafe life, Adrian you know, it's, it's outside here almost year round, unless it's pouring rain, they put those portable heaters out. And so it's a way to see your neighbors, watch the world go by. I mean, we are all famous for showing up at the cafe at 10 a.m. and not leaving until three in the afternoon. We've got our laptop, we've had different meetings. It's how you live here. Everyone lives that way here. And it's, it's really, it's really wonderful. It is very nice. You're not isolated. You do know your neighbors. You do interact. Uh, if you're learning the language, you can um, use your cafe French or your menu French uh, regularly. Uh, it, is, it is really a delightful, different lifestyle. You know, it's interesting, um, Ella and Jennifer, how many of our clients who always, always, always say they want a balcony or terrace, always, so that they can be outdoors, end up buying properties that don't necessarily have balconies or terraces, because ultimately they don't really need it, because you've got the cafe downstairs, and so you, you might not want to sit on your balcony by yourself anyway, you're going to end up going down to the cafe, so look how many of our clients end up buying properties that have beautiful views and big windows and lots of light. And then they realize they don't really need the balcony or the terrace as much as they might've thought. 
just I for that reason. You. I, and sometimes even when people think about the terraces, if you think about what that means, the inside space is recessed from the front of the building. So that sometimes can mean that the interior of your apartment isn't as light as what you could get if you had were in a bourgeois, for instance, with a Juliet balcony, massive double French windows, you open those and it's almost as if your entire apartment is outside. So that, that's true. And that's why they tend to say, you know what, we don't need the balcony. We open the windows and we feel like we're outdoors anyway. Sure. Right. For sure. Yeah. Now, property is priced based on the square meter. So when you know, you can really you can compare the prices of properties very easily on a per square meter basis. And um, you will see that smaller apartments um, and higher floors with a lift will sell at a higher price per square meter than really large apartments. Um, it's interesting with the lift, the higher you go with a lift, the more valuable. The minute it doesn't have a lift, it's, le it's the least valuable. The lift itself really changes the value of the property immediately. Um, if you're in a building and they're voting to install a lift, I don't care what floor you're living on, you should always agree and participate in that because it will always increase the value of your property. Uh, newly renovated apartments do tend to sell at a premium, but uh, we find that there are uh, developers, they're called marchand de bien. They go into an estate property, they buy it cheap, and they do what I call whitewashing them. They slap up a fresh coat of paint, they slap up a new kitchen, they don't really pay that much attention to the functionality of it necessarily. They use a lot of the same materials, the cheap materials they can find. And in the end, they have a, a on the surface, a fairly nice looking out of the box property that they can sell at a very high price but it might not be to your taste or it might not have been done exactly the way you would have done it from a functionality standpoint. Uh, so I personally think it's better to buy a property that really needs you know, a lot of work that is what I call a wreck so that you can do it um, to your own taste and satisfaction. And when you look at the price, you should pay a lot less for a, a property like that. And when you add the renovation to it, the idea is that you don't overcapitalize it and it becomes current market value. So that's the key to buying into a property that needs a lot of work is just, uh, although everybody loves to do what they wanna do and end up spending more than they might have wanted to to begin with, but in the end it's worth it because you have to enjoy your property, let's face it, right? You all wanna add anything to that? Yes, Adrian, your uh, whitewashing story, uh, I always reflect on one of my first years working with you and we walked into an apartment that just looked so wonderful on online and realized that the Marchand de Bien had literally put the wall you walked into a wall, a bedroom wall, and the kitchen was on the other, the kitchen, the living area was on the other side of the apartment. And it was just a catastrophe. So what we want to do is avoid, help our clients avoid buying what somebody else has already invested in and not designed properly. They stripped out all the charm. They made it cookie cutter looking. Um, it's, and, uh, and then we have to go in and our clients have to go in and invest in- Redoing the, it. Mm -hmm, to make it just functional. Uh, to make it so that when you open the open the uh, bathroom door, or if the bathroom door is left open, you're not seeing just the toilet. Maybe you're seeing vanity instead. <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> not for our clients uh, and so forth. So buying a wreck, or my husband's favorite phrase, the gut job, uh, can really, in the long run, really increase your satisfaction um, and the value of the property as well right by doing it by doing it yourself and we have a wonderful team 
uh, here in Nice to do renovations. So that's that's certainly not a problem. And they're used to dealing with, you know, um, clients who are not surplus, who are not uh, physically present and working remotely. So it's really not a problem to do that work at all. That's um, correct. So, okay, just looking at property prices in Nice, um, you know, the lowest price per square meter, and this is what is reported, okay, it's not necessarily what we actually see on the market, um, because the reported prices are not actually always true to form for a variety of reasons, but the lowest you're going to find in Nice is 3,300 euros a square meter. Um, the highest could be close to 25,000 euros a square meter. But we know that, for instance, in the carry door right now, what are you guys seeing? You're seeing a 7,500 euros per square meter average about? And up, and up from there, truth. The closer you are to the water, that's the thing we're not mentioning too. Even just a block matters. If you're in that first block off the water, you're looking around 8,000 per square meter. Yeah, wow, it's, and it's it's really gone up in the last uh, year to two years during conf I think during since COVID, I've seen the prices go really up. Agreed. Yeah. It's interesting too because we're also seeing in musicians, right? We're seeing five and six thousand per square meter in musicians for before renovated. Yes, that's that's what's key, and so that's if if one needs to control cost and keep within a, a specific budget then it's, uh, you have to take into account the renovation, but where you might have to be more cautious with is uh, the decor, the design, when it's, when you're done with the renovation. But yes, we just, uh, Anja Medicine, uh, just something that with renovation will be under 9,000 uh, euros a square meter. Uh, and that's not including decor. So I think that with the UNESCO heritage site uh, designation, the prices will go up as well. So I have a question for the two of you because you're looking at this photo um, for the for sale sign. And that happens to be the building next door to mine. Yeah, I recognize Okay, that. my building's to the left, right? And they these two buildings were clearly built by the same builders and architects because they're very, very similar. That sign has been on that apartment for at least two years. Yep. I mean, it's just been there. Do you have any idea about that particular apartment? Oh, I've never gone to see it, but I do have something I'd love to say about it. But Ella, have you seen this particular apartment? I have not. I have tried to. Um, I have not seen it, but I too have something to say about it because um, I have worked with the agency that is representing it. Um, what is important for, and maybe this is where you're headed, uh, Jennifer, is what's important to know is that, that those signs can stay up, those links can stay live, and the apartment can be under offer. And so uh, a visit's not possible, and it's sure. not the final signature that those links come down or that those signs come down. The other thing is, is that the sign can be up and uh, the link can be live. It can be under offer and go off the market. And then the offer falls through and it comes back on the market. And people ask us all the time, what's wrong with this property? It's been on, I've seen it for two years. Well, there's a variety of things. It's not this. It's not the same as in North America, where there's a problem with the property because it's back on the market or it's been on the market for a long time. It's just a very different process. I agree, and I think this one, my particular suspicion, knowing the agency, is this is their advertising. I think they're very good friends with, or one of their agents actually lives there, and and this is right on Room Messina, which is the big pedestrian street where all the tourists pass by, and they have an agency on that street. And maybe it, maybe this property just needs a lot of work, and, and it may and true right. And if when they sometimes when they need a lot of work. Uh, buyers aren't as you know attracted to it. I I would like to personally go see this property if it's possible. So I'm asking you all to do that. Great. Okay. We'll arrange that. <laughs> I I suspect it might be every bit as wonderful as my own next since it's next door. Yeah. Uh -huh. I agree. 
You know, I'd like to add just a little more detail to what Ellis said, because I think it's really important. I've been talking to a lot of clients recently about this, why a property can be off. So not visitable. Okay. So it's under offer and they may have even signed the compromis, the pre-sale contract on it. However, French law requires that if you are seeking financing for the purchase, you are guaranteed 60 days in which to obtain that financing. That's two months, right? And so a seller can be tied up. They can't show it. They can't go under any other offers. They can't secondarily accept another offer. They can't do anything until the end of that 60 days. And so it is so often that we've seen, um, they leave the signs up because why wouldn't you? I mean, if you're the property owner, you'd want to have the ad still online. You'd want to have the signs still outside. Because well, there's no guarantee that the buyer's going to get the mortgage. That's exactly right. So we're seeing this more and more and more with this new law about these 60 days. It's, it's really onerous. Okay, well, on that note, this is the end of our presentation. I just want to reiterate um, that we are more than just property uh, consultants. We, you know, we really believe that we offer a lot to our community. So you can subscribe to our weekly newsletters. There are three every week. Um, you can see us on House Hunters International on uh, HGTV's show. We run a coffee gathering on the second Tuesday of every month in Paris, not in Nice, unfortunately, but in Paris. And um, you can always book a personal or group consultation with me and participate in webinars and conferences such as this one. So you can always just check our website for upcoming events. And um, just to finish, so there we are, who's also on this uh, photograph is, because you see Ella uh, on the upper left, I'm here in the center, Patty Sadoskas on the upper right, Martin Di Matteo, who's our designer and uh, you know, contractor in Paris on the lower right, Jennifer in the middle and on the bottom, and Laura Poirier, who does our uh, design and contracting work here in Nice, she's on the lower left. And so, the question I have for all of you out there, this audience, is now that we have given you all this information, you need to think about why do you still need us to help you through this process? And maybe Ella and Jennifer and even Patty can give us the answer. Well, we start I, the top? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the main, the main reason is um, anyone would need us for a, a rental or a purchase is because we work for you. Our number one job is to protect you and uh, not the seller, not the renter, uh, the renting, the person that's renting out the apartment to someone. We work for you. Thank that's you. great, Ella. Um, I can add to that. So I, before I came to work with Adrian and this wonderful crew, I was a traditional agent. I had my own agency. So I learned a lot about the differences between how property is bought and sold here in France compared to the US. And you know, we've said it earlier, there is no central clearing house and you cannot be guaranteed if you find someone that you like that they will show you everything on the market. It just doesn't work that way. And because as Ella pointed out, we are consultants, we work for you. Therefore you will get to see everything that's on the market and available to you. Well, and come on, we all know uh, how uh, difficult and bureaucratic this process is and what we go through for our clients, I can't even imagine what it would be like as an individual <laughs> trying to maneuver all of that. Um, I had a long conversation with our notaire in Paris just yesterday, as a matter of fact. Um, and he said, boy, I wish all of our Anglophone clients were working with you instead of direct with us because you know, they have massive amounts of questions and need a lot of handholding. And the notaires are not prepared to do that. It's not their job. So you know, there's going to be a disconnect between the client and even the notaire because they're just not prepared to provide all the necessary information and uh, handholding that you know, an organization like ours can do. 
So it was, it was an interesting conversation and it's true. We know, we know what it takes to go from beginning to end and all the complications and you're dealing with different laws, different, um, la different language, of course, different system. Everything is so new and different for the buyer. So um, I guess we need to let them find that out for themselves, however. Um, Patty, is there anything you'd like to add before we say so long? Well, the one thought that went through my mind is that here in France, this, the agent always represents the seller. There's no dual agency. So when you contact that agent, they're there to sell you the apartment. They're not there to look out for your best interests like we are. That's exactly right. And they'll do or say almost anything to make that sale. And they really aren't going to question whether something's perfect for you as the buyer, because they do just want to make that sale. And we see that all the time. So on that note, thank you all very, very much. Thank you, audience out there. Uh, thanks to everyone who came to our conference. We had a lot of fun this morning um, redoing this and offering you this bonus package with a lot more information. So on that note, we're going to say au revoir. Au revoir. <laughs>